Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. I know it's been a minute since I've done a proper art tutorial video, but today I'm going to walk you through the beginning, middle and end, the entire process that it took to put together this entire painting here. So I hope you enjoy this episode and uh, I hope you get a lot of useful information out of it and uh, let's get to it. So welcome all. Uh, so. Like I said in the beginning, we're going to be following me uh, putting together this, uh, uh, I think I called it Stroll. This painting, it's a, it's a painting, I suppose, of a happy place for me, I suppose, <laughs> if you will. Um, so this painting takes place over an, over a couple of weeks. Um, it's a time span, I think in total maybe 20 hours to complete this painting. Here in the background, you're going to see me... Uh, be um I'm uh staining the canvas in a way that you know I've already stained the canvas that it's brown so light brown that I can like work on top of that but here I'm kind of just loosely staining it to like block in these sort of shapes that that I have in mind for this painting I'm going to I'm going to rub it back a bit you know sort of I I can get this faint sort of sense but this that sort of stain was just just purely for my own you know, to see how things looked in bl blocky form. But um, even though I've rubbed it back, like all those blocks are still in place there. You can still sort of see it faintly. Um, so with every drawing part of the painting, uh, I always really start with the equator, the horizon line, um, you know, where I want the eye line to sit uh, on a painting. It, it sort of um, brings about, you know, the uh, whole aspect of a landscape, you know, you can feel either very overpowered or dominant over it, depending on where that sort of eye line is. And uh, you can play around with that and find some really funny things with that. Um, like most of my drawings when I um, start up a painting, it's, it's pure scumbling, really, um, just jotting in all the key aspects that, I, that I'm going to need for the painting to commence. And then, you know, once they're down, they're down and I forget about it really. It's it's only key aspects do I focus on when I'm uh, thinking about my drawing part. Like all my paintings, I start with the furthest thing away, coming to the f forefront. And uh, first thing, furthest thing away in this painting is the sky, obviously. So this blue is actually a blue that I uh, worked out on plain air the other day before I started this painting and it was this really nice ultramarine uh, natural blue that I was able to work out while painting on plain air so I emphasize this again and again and again in all my videos is paint on plain air if you'd like to do landscapes it you just you just get a real sense of colors you get a real sense of color mixing you know you can really match those colors to a lifelike color when you're painting on plain air um, it you know everything you learn on plain air is so immensely valuable when you come back into the studio it's so so valuable um, so the clouds here are an important key to this painting but not so important that I need to render them out uh, to perfection I, I didn't feel the need to do that this is only the first layer anyhow so I've um, I've kind of blocked them in and uh, gone down to a smaller brush size to sort of give the emphasis give the illusion of, of detail on them you know working from dark to light again but um, yeah not too f focused on uh, much detail at this point you can see I've moved down to the uh, to the mountains in the background here so Sky first, furthest thing away. Mountains second thing, furthest thing away. Uh, these sort of mountains are really quite beautiful, especially the one off to the right in the background here. It's a uh, this this whole mountain range here. It's important to know that it is a really far away object. So the less detail, it really is going to be the better. You know, um, if if I can make sense of it from standing three meters back, uh, you know, then I've done my job really is my whole thought process to approaching this sort of, um, well, I guess it's painting in general as well. You know, that if I can, if this painting makes sense and it works for me standing three meters away, well, or I think the thing is seven feet back, uh, then you've done your job, <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, it's up to you, really. Discretion is advised, obviously. Like, whether or not you are a type of painter that loves to 
really, really render out that painting, really, really render out your painting. Um, I'm, however, not so that that painter. <laughs> I'm, I'm more so a, a, a painterly painter. You know, I, I, I really tried to imbue the painting not with its own uh, nature type of, you know, observational, but, you know, a real sense of how I'm feeling is, is put into my brush strokes in the painting. Obviously still representational, but uh, very more uh, naturalistic, I suppose. You think of the works of uh, Soroya and, and, and um, all these uh, beautiful landscape painters, these Russian painters and stuff like that. These are uh, people I really try to emulate when I approach my uh, landscape paintings. You probably all heard me say this uh, a couple of times now on my YouTube, uh, watching some of my videos. I talk about this pretty often, talking about landscapes but um and so true um you can see me approaching foreground midground and um working these greens and it's important to note that i'm not using my brightest greens here you know i'm really using a half tone of the brightest green and uh working from the darkest green up up to that sort of half tone so you saw me put in all those dark parts there and jotting in, jotting in. I'm, I'm for this entire painting. I pretty much use this one, uh, small round. It's this sort, it's this small ivory round, I suppose, um, to to work in all these th uh, key aspects of the painting. Here, here you can see this is an important part of the painting process is um oiling out the painting. So I've let it sit for a couple of days here, um, and you can see that you know compared to the right hand side how much more vibrant it is now it's got some oiling out over it compare that to the left hand side where it's really dry and, and the colors are quite faint um, you can see how that all shifts when I start to oil out it I, it's an important thing is that it creates a slick surface to work on top of so it's really nice for layering uh, oiling out is great for that um, Another thing is that you, you start to, different colors set at different rates and stuff like that. And so you can start to see areas which are duller, areas which are shinier. Oiling out sort of like uh, pretty much does what it says. It oil outs the whole entire area so that it sets smoothly, sets uh, um, all in unison together. Um, instead of having different parts set different rates and, and looking whacked up. <laughs> also, it helps to tell your colors what they really look like after they've dried out. You know, get that vibrancy back into them. So, I had to speed up. I start, I start, I'm just going to start speeding up the video incrementally here. I'll slow it down from little sections. But because I'm working in such a such a wide area, I'm just speeding it up so you get a real sense of, of, of what's happening across the painting process. I'm starting to really get, uh, you know, refined with my brush strokes. I never get too refined with my brush strokes uh, for my landscapes. It's not, it's not a thing that I like to do personally. I really love painterly type of landscapes. And this is, it's a type of um, uh, style that I just fucking love. <laughs> so I really tried to you know, however, saying that now that we're in probably the fourth layer, maybe the third layer of the painting process, I am really starting to, you know, constrain my uh, painterly side of myself and bring everything into um, a more rendered out finish. Um, you can see I'm starting to use a lot, some lighter greens here, some dirtier greens he here and there as well. Lighting up paths where I want to be lit and darkening areas where I want to be darkened. Uh, so so I'm really trying to uniform the painting and uh, make it really readable. Uh, help the readability of it all come together. Make it really nice and flush. And and yeah, that's that's the whole process of, of painting in, in, in layers is that we... Uh, we start out pretty rough and then and then slowly methodically uh start getting uh, tighter and tighter and tighter so coming back over the top of this uh, mountain range here um the mountain range is uh you know I, I wasn't quite happy with the form of how i left it in the uh first layer so this is the second layer on the mountain range here you know it it is you're never quite happy with anything in the first layer. That's why we're painting layers, I suppose. <laughs> but um, you know, I'm really, really happy with the way this mountain range turned out. I'm I'm really trying to not go too detailed in these mountain ranges. I really want to keep that that painterly sort of feel to them and so that 
that uh, detail is kind of lost in the distance with it. So yeah, but uh, I'm much happier with the way that it's come out uh, now after c going over that for the second layer. This um this house here, this um this barn, this house, whatever you want to call it, I'm not quite sure either. Um, <laughs> this barn house, let's say that. Um, it, it was it was a little bit of a struggle, sort of placing it and forming it together, especially because it had an orange roof. Um, you know, I, I mean, I could have I've could have made it any sort of color to be honest, but I think that orange kind of worked. Uh, well with the landscape you know better than just having another brown having those earthy tones i think it I think it really pops make it makes it you know kind of scream yeah this is this is man-made among the whole beautiful natural landscape this part right here you can you can it just stands out amongst it all as a, as a land as a man-made sort of area um so that second layer i brought in that fencing there um that fencing you know uh, i think really helps to separate it from the landscape itself give it its own sort of area its section uh its readability there you know i think that that fencing really really helps uh set it into the scene um okay so i'm coming on top of uh i've oiled out again i pretty much oil out before i every session that i start to paint on because between every session there's been like a day or two apart um i'm i'm really Again, working my brushwork, getting it a lot more refiner, um, having lots and lots more uh, brush marks over the top of the canvas here, uh, over the top of the panel, I, uh, I suppose you call it. And you can see I'm starting to bring in these lighter greens, you know, slowly building up to these to my highest highlights. You know, it's so hard to control that. It's so hard to like restrain from just going like, ah, there's my highest highlight right there you know but but um is once you ref reframe yourself from from dabbing on those uh those brightest brights you know it's really rewarding to build up to it and, and eventually come up to it. it it's so good it's so so good <laughs> and you can see what effect that has on the whole on the whole picture as a whole there is um putting in those really bright greens there you know that reading path and and the reading of the landscape just you know you know, really increased in its readability, just bringing in those highlights there. But whereas before, everything was kind of the same value, but putting in those sort of highlights really like makes it pop, makes where you want the uh, audience's eyes to flow and follow through, really come through. Um, back on second layer of my clouds, I think I only do two layers of the clouds because I, you know, I'm, I've oiled out the clouds. I've washed over this sort of um, paler blue, a bit more of a saturated blue than the first layer. And then I've sort of worked the clouds into each other and sort of blended and refined um, them over the top of each other into the background as well. You'll see in a minute, I'll come back in and, um, you know, uh, cut things into a bit more uh, refined uh, shapes in a minute. But coming back down here is really the part i've been looking forward to the most is adding in all these flowers so this is what the whole painting is worthwhile to me is finally being able to put down all these beautiful beautiful flowers which is what inspired me in the first place to paint this scene there's all these beautiful flowers in the landscape um i don't know if they're any sort of particular flowers um, i'm not a botanist <laughs> at all um but they just look so beautiful to me and I, I love the way that they sat on the landscape and I loved having them be my brightest brights really. Um, it, so I, I held off on having two bright of greens and, and um, sort of let my flowers be the brightest brights in the whole landscape. You know, in, in areas, in certain areas where they need to be and help with the reading, they were darker than than uh, other bits of the flowers. But yeah, in general, in general, they were the brightest brights for this whole painting. So coming in over the top of this uh, shack, uh, shed, uh, house, again for the final rendering out of this uh, place. You know, I'm 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 working, I'm reworking this um, this roof, this tin sort of roof of this building, until I I've, I've finally found like how I liked it to look. But it did take a bit of rendering out, a bit of bit of playing around to really nail it um so that was that was a little bit of a struggle for a minute there uh, took me quite a while to sort of nail that down and then these clouds you can see 
I'm adding my brightest highlights, that pure titanium white over the top of those clouds to get that feeling right on top there. So I choose to, to end this video with the signing of the painting. I didn't film the touch-ups I did with glazing. It wasn't too much. I just darkened up a few areas. Um, but however, I'll show you the finished product right now. So I hope you all really enjoyed that episode. Um, I hope there's a lot of uh, great content in there that you could learn from, that you took away and were able to put into your own artistic development. Um, and I hope you overall you just enjoyed the video as a whole. So if you liked the video, please remember to give it a like, hit subscribe. Once you hit subscribe, hit that bell button so you get notified every time I upload. That would mean a lot to me and I'd really appreciate your help on that part. Thank you. Always looking for feedback on these videos. So if you like this video, if you didn't like this video, please leave your feedback in the comments below. As always, you can check me out on all my social media platforms. TikTok at the moment has been going off. So uh, go head over to TikTok, find Zach Hampson. Uh, have a flip through some of my videos. A lot of people have been really enjoying those. Other than that, I'll see you guys very shortly with another art tutorial video.